The oldest auto auction in Wisconsin is selling out after being in the family for 70 years. Tri-State Auto Auction. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, coming to you live from Chile, Williston, North Dakota, with the amazing Elizabeth. For used car buyers, there will be a steady flow of news of big price drops coming in the days of head in given categories of cars. Still to be had in the market in the months ahead. We covered some of it yesterday on this video appearing on the screen and more on that in the coming days. Yes, there's a lot more good news coming for car buyers. The interview we are about to share with you is a couple who have owned the Tri-State Auto Auction since 1977, and it's actually been in the family since 1952. Seven decades of experience in the car business and them selling out now is just another indication of the difficulties facing everyone involved with selling cars. It's pretty amazing all the fine folks we've met in the car business over the years publishing our content on The Homework Guy. We got to know Gerald and Helen Brogley through their son, Mike Mueller, who is a longtime family friend of ours. We've discussed his folks' auto auction many times over the years. Hard to imagine it's selling right now. As you will hear in the upcoming interview I did with this amazing couple from Tri-State Auto Auction, they are an example of, of how good people really do exist in the business. Gerald and Helen joined me on a recorded interview from Cuba City, Wisconsin, where the story of the sale of their auction is unfolding. Tri-State is the oldest auto auction in the state of Wisconsin and the first ever. They literally have auction number one. The auction property is being sold via online only auction and it's listed at peoplescompany.com. The bidding is currently live and will remain open until Tuesday, January 31st at 3 p.m. Central Time, with the new owner of the auction expected to be announced shortly. The final bid on the auction is expected January 31st. Stay tuned for this. Kevin had an emotionally charged phone interview with Gerald and Helen, and their son Mike joined in before the end. Without further delay, here's that exclusive interview. You came to a point where you were uh, selling 1,600 cars a year in the auction, and then eventually that peaked out at 10,000 cars. So what brought up the volume from 1,600 to 10,000 cars? Just a, a lot of hard work. I hit the road and calling on dealers and... Back at that time, the competition wasn't that stiff. I had an auction in Fox Valley, and I had Milwaukee, and that was about the only two auctions that were really in a competition. So I took an in Rockford auto auction, but I took and just called on dealer after dealer after dealer. We got a lot of the bigger bigger stores in Madison, and then uh, we were buying cars. I was at State Line Automotive, our dealership that's five miles south of the auction, and I was buying cars. I was buying the Boucher cars, which is a big company. I had a son-in-law, Cam, and my daughter, Rhonda. They were buying Zimbrick cars. And my other, and my son, Michael, at that time, he was buying Zimbrick cars in Madison also and Boucher cars in Janesville. Wow. So uh, we would take, and my son-in-law, he would be running about 30 cars. Mike would be running about 25 or 30, and I'd be running about 25 or 30. And we would stagger them in the sale, so, uh, and we... Uh, made a pact that we don't take nothing home. First money is your best money. You just take and make sure that you can get out of it and make it work. And that's what we did. And we, 90 cars sold the first uh, 45 minutes of sale. It used to be in the spring of the year when tax time rolled around, I would get a lot of buyers out of Rockford and out of your bigger cities. And at tax time, of course, everybody had money in their pocket and they bought cars. And I, there was a couple of times where out of the out of the three lanes we'd sell a hundred percent wow so then along came the pandemic and your auction ended up getting shut down for like 10 weeks but you guys never yeah. went to online bidding and that sort of thing you stayed with the face-to-face -face. so talk a little bit yeah. about coming out of that uh 10 week shutdown the health department said yeah you can go ahead jerry and have go ahead and start having your auctions and after 10 weeks i started hitting these dealers and we had a bang up sale uh, you know the, the, because everybody loyalty and stuff they knew that we could open somewhere so so yeah it, it, it come back around pretty good but after that first first week or so there just wasn't any cars out there uh, when you got to the Mississippi River headed west it, your dealership didn't have any cars and uh, Plaza Auto Auction some friends of mine that run Plaza Auto Auction they, they went through the same thing you know they just cars had dried up and it was because there was no new car dealerships uh, that had anything and, right uh, they were getting their cars same place as i was getting my cars they're 80 miles down the road and we're hitting the same places the same dealers and everything else and we had loyalty in between the auctions too mm -hmm. everybody kind of had their own own niche and uh 
nobody really ever bothered them too much. You know what I'm saying? You had right. yours, and they had theirs, and had good working relationships with everybody. I have your Mike, your son Mike uh, patching in, so hold on just a second. Okay, you there, Mike? Yes, I'm here. So, Gerald, you, you've gone through um, close to seven decades in the car business. You've witnessed a ton of changes, a lot of ups and downs and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, what years are you getting up to? I'm 78. My wife is 78. We're going to turn seven, both turn 79 and 23. Gotcha. Your reasons for getting out of the car business at this point, are you just getting worn out from the rat race? Yeah, basically. Basically, that's it. We're just ready to retire. I was I was 24 years old when I started working at the auction. Wow. I'm 78 now, so uh, I've been around, and, uh, and Helen started there uh, uh, eight years before I had started there. She started driving the cars when she turned 16. Well, her we folks owned started. the auction uh, back then after 52, so... She had a little head start yeah. on you. Yeah, she did. And, uh... <laughs> so something I have so, to share with you, Gerald, uh, we had a, a chance to visit earlier, and I wanted to give you a reflection on something. Quite often on our channel, the Homework Guy channel, we hear from people who are insistent that there's no good people in the in the car business. Gerald, what our, our viewing audience doesn't know is that You've never fired anybody from your auction and you've never had anybody quit over all those years that you've been running the auction. And I have to tell you as being a former business talk radio broadcaster that that is completely unheard of. Your, your staff that you have there at the auction has to be like an extension of your family. Talk about the difficulty of parting ways with all of those people. This has to be a bittersweet ending for you guys. Oh, it is. It is. It's very, very touching. Yeah, I mean, it, and we've we've went and our full time guys, we've we've went to great lengths to make sure that they had insurance when they when we do close. We're keeping the, all of our full time employees up until the day that uh, it's sold, and uh, all of our people know that the auctions for sale and stuff. And my wife, uh, she wrote up a nice letter and put it in with her checks last night how much we've appreciated them and that if we ever start back up again they, they will be contacted and if an auction buys it somebody is buys it and is going to have an auction that all of their names will be passed on to the auction as far as drivers and workers and all the all that and uh, we can put in a good word for them and try and get them hooked back up at the auction uh, awesome it's yeah, it's uh, in the community. I mean, uh, the community. Like, uh, it's uh, we 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 work we work for the community, trying to make the community as much as it possibly can. You know, it speaks volumes about your vision as a business person because they have a lot of confidence in in what you're doing, and it talks a lot about how you treat people too. Because, uh, you know, the the funny thing is, is there's a lot of people that believe that they're a leader. And I always tell them, you know, if you took a walk out in the woods, turn around and look who's behind you. If nobody's there, you're not a leader. There you go. Kevin, last night when I, when I was talking to dealers, and there's dealers from all over were there. I mean, we, we had a full house. And I would stop and talk to this dealer, talk to that dealer. And some of the dealers, they would tear up. Right. They've been coming for so long. Yeah. They've been coming for so many years. And got along with Helen and I and all of our people so good that they just they don't know what they're going to do without us. And that's that's quite a feeling. Yes, no doubt. I, I can tell that it touches you guys uh, a lot, and yeah. that's a huge reflection to, to what you guys have done. Well, Mike, uh, I want to give the last word to you. You grew up in the auto auction with your parents. And talk about how you're feeling today with the pending sale of your folks' uh, auto auction. Well, it, if it would sell and it would move on to somebody else's ownership, um, it was one terrific ride. And somebody that that uh, got to be a part of it as a as a youngster, teenager, learned immense lessons from that, and met a lot of good friends. And uh, I love mom and dad for what they're doing for the whole community and everybody that's out there that's been able to work for them because they are they're a model uh, employer and. Uh, if anybody wants to write the book, they could do it. Awesome. So, say, Mike, many of my viewers here on my Homework Guy channel have been aware of the hospitalization and the health challenges that I went through this past year. 
And Mike, you were a key for advocating for me at the hospital, even helping my wife gain visitation rights there when the hospital uh, tried to block her from getting in. And you had to jeopardize your own job to do it. So I can say, Mike, I love you like a brother. I love you too, Kevin. I do it all again the same way. Awesome. Well, thanks, uh, Gerald and Helen, for uh, joining us here today. Is there any closing thoughts you want to share with our audience? I just know we had good people and good customers, and that was that meant the world to us. Like we put in our uh, on our flyers for years. Can't spell success without you. Well, you guys have been a bright spot in a business that has uh, far too much darkness and. You've shown people how to get it done the right way. Great job. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks to okay. both of you for uh, joining us, and uh, God bless. Take care. Thank you, Kevin. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, bye bye. That was truly special, Kevin. I got a little choked up myself listening to their heartfelt love of the work they did. Gerald and Helen are truly great people. This was also very special how you pulled Mike in at the end and thanked him for his advocacy at the hospital. Those are some really tough days for all of us, and we're all so happy you made it through all of that. Mike is such a special guy, and he will always be near and dear to our family. Then to hear his folks getting choked up about talking about the people and the legacy they are leaving behind with the auction, it's clear why Mike turned out to be the great human being that he is. You mentioned the health update, Kevin. Is that something you think you're ready to share with people? <clears throat> you have quite a story to tell. I think I could do that at some point, perhaps soon, if our viewers would like to hear about it. So just say so in the comment section down below. I have to say I really do appreciate all the wonderful thoughts and prayers people offered on my behalf that I got to read after I came home from the hospital. So thank you to all of you. If you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, remember to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell for notifications. I hope you enjoyed the interview today with Gerald, Helen, and Mike. Thanks everyone for coming back, and to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.